Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, isang uh, malaking privilegio na makasama ko ang aking pamilya dito sa Los Banyos at para sa pagkakataong ito na makipag-fellowship at uh, magbukas ng salita ng Diyos kasama ninyo uh, lalo ngayon uh, sa special na pagdiriwang ng 43 years ng biyaya ng Diyos. Uh, ako po'y nagdadala ng pagbati mula sa aming iglesia, Grace Church Santa Maria, uh, Reformed Baptist Church sa uh, Bulacan. Uh, we are, uh, as a uh, brother has just said, Pastor Noel, we are not even one year old. And so what an encouragement for us to be part of uh, a wider body of like-minded Reformed Baptist believers uh, here in the Philippines, especially as we, uh, unlike you, Uh, have been uh, uh, who have been faithfully proclaiming uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ over so many years. Uh, we are still very much in these early days of ministry, and so purihin ang panginoon sa iyong tapat na halimbawa sa amin. Before I pray, I do also want to particularly uh, thank Pastor Noel Espinosa not only for the invitation. Uh, to come and preach today, but also for the example uh, that he has been to me uh, personally, and I know so many other uh, pastors here in the Philippines, how blessed you are as a church to have such a steadfast minister of the gospel. Well, bago natin tingnan ang ating, uh, ang, ang tekstong binasa para sa ating kanina, uh, tayo po manalangin at humingi ng tulong sa Diyos. Uh, let's pray. Our great and gracious God, it is because of that graciousness that we gather here together this afternoon. Lord, were it not for your grace that we see in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would be heading for hell without hope in this world. But Father, we thank you that that is not the case for many of us. You have saved us. You are sanctifying us, and one day we will be glorified uh, in new bodies that will not grow sick and weak. Lord, we thank you for 43 years of your steadfast love to the church here in Los Banos. And we do pray that you will continue to have your hand of blessing upon them as they continue to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Jesus. We do ask, Lord God, that as we come now to this passage of Scripture, that you would give us open eyes and unstopped ears and receptive hearts and minds to the wonderful things that are found in this book. We pray this not because we deserve it, but because we come in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And verses 12 to 27, that will be the passage this morning. Please uh, do have your Bibles open to that passage and keep them open so that you might see that this is not my opinion, but this is truly from the Word of God. We will not look at this passage exhaustively, but we will do our best uh, to, I will do my best to summarize for you uh, what we're talking about uh, this afternoon. A unity amidst diversity. It is the distinctive mark of every church of Christ. We are united as one body, but diverse in that we have many members. Ay lang taon na ang nakalilipas, dumalaw ako sa isang uh, classical music concert. Maaga akong dumating, gaya narinig ko pa yung mga uh, musikero na nag-warm up ng mga instrumento nila. And all of them were playing their instruments at different speeds and with different sounds. And it sounded awful. Did not sound good at all. There was the violin and there was the trumpet and there was the harp and the flute all doing their own thing. Ito ang tinatawag nating cacophony, a clashing noise which hurts the ears. Subalit, pagkatapos, dumilim ang mga ilaw, 
tumayo ang conductor ng musika at biglang tumahimik ang lahat ng mga, uh, ang lahat ng ingay. And as I sat in that audience waiting for something to take place, suddenly the conductor stood up and he began to wave his arms. And then a joyful and a melodious piece of music began to fill the concert hall. A cacophony, now by the direction of this musical conductor and the skill of the orchestra, blended into the sound of a symphony. Well, habang iniisip natin ang tungkol sa iglesia, makikita natin ang isang katulad na senaryo. Kapag ang iglesia ay directed sa pamamagitan ng conductor ng salita ng Diyos, at bawat isa ay ginagamit ang kanila mga individual na gifting, tulad ng isang bihasang orkestra, tayo ay nakakagawa ng isang magandang simponya. At iyan ang layunin ng bawat tunay na iglesia. And yet we know that that is not always the case. Nakakulungkot sabihin na maraming tinatawag na iglesia ngayon ay puro malalakas at magulong ingay lang. It is a cacophony when you enter such churches. Bakit? Dahil, wa dahil wala silang conductor. They have neglected the Bible. They have turned away from the truth of Scripture, and therefore all of their gifts are of absolutely no use at all. Well, this afternoon I want to encourage us to do the opposite. Habang ipinagdiriwang natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos sa nakaraang 43 years ng iglesia dito sa Los Banos, and as you look ahead to the future, we must come to the Word this afternoon with the understanding that the great need of the hour is that in all of your diversity as a church, that you would strive together for unity. That collectively, as a body made up of many different members, you might be like an orchestra, Everyone playing their part in the ministry of the gospel to make a beautiful symphony that is glorifying to God. That was the desire of the famous conductor, uh, composer rather, see, uh, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, who apparently uh, would sign off all of his musical compositions with the initials S. D G solid Deo Gloria sa Dios lamang ang kaluluwalhatian and it is upon that foundation that I would like us to look at the theme that has been assigned for me to preach on this afternoon which we see uh, so clearly displayed in the text that was read for us earlier 1 Corinthians chapter 12 unity amidst diversity now, first things first, ano ang ibig sabihin natin sa uh, salitang unity? Well, we need to be clear what it does not mean. Firstly, unity does not mean union. Makikita natin na maraming mag-asawa ang legal na nasa isang union ng kasal, ngunit patuloy ang kanilang mga conflict at argumento. Hindi sila tunay na united. But neither does the word mean uniformity. Uh, kakatapos ko lang maglakad malapit sa isang simbahan at sa pinto, nagulat ako nang makita ang dress code. Men must dress like this. Women must dress like that. Uh, gayon din, kinakailangan lahat ng miyembro ay bumuto para sa parehong kandidato sa isang election. Dapat pare-pareho ang kanilang mga opinion at interest. Everything must be the same. At ang aking isip ay bumalik sa talatang nasa harap natin. Ito ba ang itinutulag ni Pablo sa Iglesia sa Corinto kapag pinag-uusapan ng unity? Na hindi naman habang mabuti na magkaroon ng isang common confession at mga convictions of faith concerning what we believe about Scripture, ang analogy ng katawan dito ay hindi ginamit upang magtakta ng isang uri ng kulto ng pagkakapareho sa simbahan. 
Ang mga miyembro ng iglesia ay hindi dapat maging mga robot na nakaprograma upang magisip, magsalita at makaramdam ng pareho. No, tulad ng sinabi na ni Pablo noong nasa chapter 1 verse 10, I appeal to you brothers by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you but that you be united. That is the kind of unity that we are speaking of. At bumabalik tayo sa ating text habang tinitingnan natin ang larawan ng iglesia, narito ang isang ilustrasyon ng maraming bahagi Ngunit isang katawan. Sa ibang salita, there is unity even in the midst of diversity. O sa, lau- sa liwanag ng lahat ng ito, nais kong hati ng ating oras na magkasama sa tatlong punto. I know that uh, uh, here at, uh, in Los Banos, mas familiar kayo di ba, sa uh, two-point sermons. Uh, this is a three-point sermon. Uh, you can maybe combine uh, one of them with the other if that makes you feel a little bit better. But uh, firstly, there is a snapshot of unity. Secondly, there is a spectrum of abilities. And thirdly, there is a statement of solidarity. Look with me firstly at verses 12 to 13. We find here a snapshot of unity. A snapshot of unity. It says here, just as a body... Though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit to form one body. Ang mga talatang ito ay nagsasabi ng ganito sa madaling salita, imposibleng pag-usapan ang iglesia ng hiwalay sa Kristo. Many churches exist today. All kinds of denominations with multiple sites, large and impressive buildings the size of sports stadiums, thousands of attendees and, and, and subscribers to that faith. Ngunit kung wala si Kristo sa gitna, nawawala sa kanila ang karapatang magtaglay ng pangalan ng iglesia. You see, what is described for us dito sa verse 12, this is a true church. It is built upon a firm foundation. It is connected like branches into the true vine. It is united to the body of Christ himself through his life, death, and resurrection. That is the picture. That is the analogy that the apostle Paul is using. Isang iglesia na tinawag upang mabuhay bilang katawan ni Kristo. Kaya sinabi ng isang commentator, upang magawa ang kanyang gawain sa lupa, si Jesus ay may katawan ng laman at dugo. Upang magawa ang kanyang gawain ngayon, si Jesus ay may katawan na binubuo ng mga buhay, uh, buhay na tao. But how do we enter into the body? How do we we become one with Christ? What is the entry point into the body of Christ? Well, it says here that the unifying factor is that we were all baptized into one spirit. Tayo ay bautismuhan sa isang espiritu. Now, hindi ito karaniwang paraan ng pagtalakay tungkol sa kaligtasan. Kapag pinag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa isang tao na nagiging kristyano, may uh, ipat ibang paraan ng pagpapahayag. Some talk about conversion. Others say that they have been saved. Still others might say that they have been born again. And these are all good and biblical phrases to use. But we might equally say that we have been baptized with the Spirit, or we were made to drink of one Spirit. Yan ang wika ng ating teksto. Neither expressions there are a reference, by the way, to water baptism. This is speaking about salvation itself. Kaya nga sa Mateo chapter 3, verse 11, sinabi ni Juan Bautista, bautismuhan ko, 
ko kayo ng tubig, ngunit ang darating pagkatapos ko ay magbabautismo sa inyo ng Espiritu Santo. Hindi niya tinutukoy ang uri ng bautismo na paglubog sa tubig o ang ordinansa o sakramento ng bautismo, ito ay espiritual. At kaya naman, this baptism into the body of Christ with the Spirit is not something that is unique to only a select and a chosen few people, but it is a universal Christian experience. Ito ang realidad ng bawat tunay na mananampalataya. If you are a Christian today, truly believing in Christ, then you have been baptized with this, with the Holy Spirit. You see, there are churches today, you may have come across them or even been a part of them who falsely teach that the baptism with the Holy Spirit is a post-conversion experience. It is available to all, they say, but it is not universally experienced within the body of Christ. And so what happens? Well, many in those churches sadly spend their whole lives desperately seeking to receive that second blessing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And yet clearly the baptism of the Spirit here is nothing other than an initial experience that is enjoyed by all who are truly placed into the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, hindi posible na maging kristyano at hindi pautismuhan ng Espiritu. At hindi rin posible na makaroon ng higit sa isang bautismo sa Espiritu. You don't just get a little bit of the Spirit When you are converted as a deposit, a kind of 10% initial down payment, and then now you have to wait around and work hard, and then you might just get the extra 90% when you get baptized with the Spirit. That is an unbiblical way of understanding our text. If you are in Christ, then you already have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that, Paul says, is the basis of our unity. This event of conversion is what unites a church together. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit maaari tayong maglagpay sa buong mundo at makatagpo ng mga tao na hindi natin kilala, hindi natin naunawaan ang kanilang wika, wala tayong kaalaman sa kanilang kultura, at gayon pa man ang ating mga puso ay nagtataglay ng pakakiisa. That is why I feel so at home in the Philippines, among you even this afternoon. There is an unexplainable unity that we share. Though we come from different nations, different cultural experiences, different backgrounds, we come to the one Savior, and therefore we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Because of that baptism in the Spirit, by grace through faith in Christ, we have entered into the one body of Jesus Christ. Ito ay hindi isang position na, naku, na, na nakuha natin sa pamamagitan ng ating mabubuting gawa. Hindi ito isang gantimpala na ibinibigay sa mga matuwid. Hindi ito isang tagumpay na nakuha natin sa pamamagitan ng ating pinakamahusay na pagsisikap. Ito ay nakadepende sa Diyos. Now when I say that word dependence, the world cringes. Why? Dahil ang mga modernong tao ay hindi gusto ang ideya ng pagiging dependent sa anuman. They major, don't they, on independence. Independence is what we must strive for according to the world's understanding. They, they do not want to be told that they need somebody else. They do not want to be told that they need to be defined by others. People today in modern society, they take pride in their autonomy. They major on independence, in individualism. In fact, dependence sounds like a deficiency. And so the picture, like the one that is portrayed for us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, is utterly rejected by the modern man. And yet Paul's message could not be clearer. Whilst we come to Christ individually, we do not live in Christ solitarily. 
The privilege of adoption into the family of God is that we are simultaneously blessed to be a part of Christ's body. The local church should be as close as we can get to heaven on earth. Sadly, that is not often, if ever, the case. But that is what we must strive for. To be a community of believers who have entered into one family closer to heaven than we can get on earth. And so what is the message there? Well, it is quite simple. Don't neglect the church. Don't neglect the congregation of God's people. Don't become a lone ranger. Don't live in isolation. Join the church. Put yourself under the authority and the accountability and the instruction of a faithful minister of the gospel. Join the visible communion of the saints. Why? Because this is not a human initiative. But this is a matter of divine invention. Now, I didn't get all that from the video. I don't understand completely as to how this church first came into existence. But I do know something, having uh, uh, met uh, your pastor a few times before, that uh, he did not just sit down with a committee 43 years ago to decide how they were going to run a church. No, I imagine, I'm pretty convinced that they went straight to the Bible. Why? Because in the Bible we find the blueprints. This is God's design. The church was his idea. He's the mastermind behind the church of Christ. Itong libro ay nagtuturo sa atin ng lahat ng kailangan nating malaman tungkol sa mga tungkulin at pribilehiyo ng pagiging bahagi ng isang united church. Itong libro ay nagsasabi sa atin na ang, 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 ang mabuting balita ng Ebanghelyo ni Kristo Isang mensahe ng kaligtasan na, na, na nagbubuklod sa banang na Diyos at makasalanan ng tao ay isa ring mensahe na dapat makaisa sa anumang pakakiiba o hindi pakakaunawaan na maaaring mangyari sa atin bilang mga tao ng Diyos. Psalm 133 verse 1 gives this as an incentive. Behold! How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mark chapter 3 verse 25 offers this as a warning. If a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. What are those verses teaching us? Well, it says no matter what, that the church must stand united. Well, having seen the unity, secondly, let's look together in verses uh, 14 to 24. Uh, here we see described a spectrum of abilities. A spectrum of abilities. Verses 18 to 20 particularly says this, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body here we are in a in a university campus and so i remember hearing the story of uh, two students uh, who graduated from university uh, one of them was a blind man who received the award for highest ranking student and as he stood to deliver his speech he took the trophy and suddenly broke it into two pieces dedicating one half of the award to his beloved fellow students. The two friends apparently had met each other on the very first day of university and bonded over the fact that one of them was blind and the other had no arms. And so apparently the one who had no arms would carry his books and the one who was blind would do the reading aloud in the library. What one was unable to do himself, the other compensated for that deficiency. They worked together, and so both were able to have the joy of a graduation. Well, friends, this is the same case on so many levels, isn't it? It's, it's true in sports. 
The team must all work together if they are going to win the game. There's no I in team. It's true in music, isn't it? We've seen it already in the opening illustration that the orchestra with all of the various instruments involved, they must come together to play different notes but one piece of music. At gayon pa man, walang mas totoo sa prinsipyong ito kundi kapag tungkol na sa iglesia ang pinakausapan. Dapat may complementarity sa atin. Yes, we have uh, uh, our own individual distinctions. We praise God for those things, but in the body of Christ, these are distinctions of function and not distinctions of value. Lahat tayo ay ginawa sa wangis ng Diyos, ngunit iba-iba. May mga lalaki at babae, bata at matanda, mayaman at mahirap, may educated at less educated. There is a fusion of dialects, I suspect, in the room uh, here this afternoon. We come from north and south and east and west. May ilan mula sa Visayas, iba naman mula sa Mindanao, at ang iba ay isinilang at lumaki dito sa Los Banyos. Every socio-economic group and every kind of occupation is gathered within the Church of Christ. You've got medical professionals rubbing shoulders with street sellers, but it is one single body, one body serving one Savior. There is complementarity between the bodies, the, the members of the body of Christ. Kaya sa Efeso chapter 4 verse 11, mababasa natin ang God gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every member plays their part. And the same truth is again on display here in our text this afternoon, and, and very relevantly so in terms of context. Because if you know anything about the Corinthian church, you will know that it was being sucked into the ways of the world. Many of the members were beginning to adopt the spirit of the age. They were importing the surrounding culture into the life of the church. At ang layunin ni Pablo sa paglalarawan sa iglesia sa ganitong paraan ay upang idiin na kailangan nilang makaisa una sa lahat sa pagtanggap ng kanilang diversity at spectrum of abilities. You see, apparently there were two kinds of people in the church at Corinth. Many people, but in two categories, in this congregation, firstly, there were those who had a very low opinion of their capabilities and their contributions. But the second category were those kind of people who had a, a, had a proud and an inflated view of their own giftedness. And so look at verse 15. The implication is that certain members are beginning to feel unimportant unneeded, or at least unqualified to fulfill the part that they had been given. Perhaps some of them were saying, well, look, if I, if I don't even bother to go to church, I don't think it'll make any difference. I don't think anybody would even notice that I am not there in the room. Rather than thanking God for their particular gift, they despised it. You know, think ahead to Christmas Day. Christmas is unavoidable in the Philippines. I've learned that to be true over the few years that I've been here. And maybe you love Christmas, but you do know, don't you, that on Christmas Day, gifts will be passed around and some of those gifts will be great. Some of those gifts will be garbage. And such is the feeling that is present in the church at Corinth. You can just imagine them, can't you? And, and, and they're looking at their gifts and they're beginning to feel dissatisfied. I wanted to be a preacher, but here I am, an usher on the doors. It doesn't seem fair. Marahil makakarelate kayo. Ngunit sa kabilang banda, habang may mga nagsasabi na wala silang kailangan sa akin, 
May iba naman nagsasabi, wala akong kailangan sa kanila. They think that they are God's gift to the church. They love the limelights. They love to be center stage. Their giftedness has, got, has gone to their head. They've got a lot to say and a lot to give. And they feel very proud of themselves. I was listening to my boys. I've got four boys, young boys, and they were playing with their friends not too long ago. And I heard one young boy say to the other boy, I'm talented at art and you're not. And I thought to myself, well, he may have the gift of creativity, but he obviously lacks the grace of humility. Ano nga ba ang sinasabi ng ating teksto? Ang iglesia ay isang katawan na binubuo ng maraming kasapi. Itinisenyo ng Diyos ang kanyang iglesia upang maging isang komunidad ng humble at complementary saints and servants. Bawat kasapi ay may dalang contribution na magiging pagpapala sa mas malawak na katawan. Sa katunayan, Paul here goes so far as to use the picture of talking body parts. Here's a picture, isn't it? A, a picture that captivates the imagination, I'm sure, of the children who are here. Talking body parts. There's the eye. And the ear listens as people say, what beautiful eyes you have. And he begins to feel slightly left out. Why can't I be an eye? Look at that view. Well, I can't look at the view because I'm an ear. Or there's the hand, and the hand is painting beautiful pictures and playing beautiful pieces of music on the piano or driving a car. And where's the foot? Down in the dust. There on the ground, on the pedal, on the floor, sweating in its chinellas. And yet Paul says here, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, according to his design, just as he wanted them to be. Divine design. Mga kapatid, kung kayo'y dumadalo sa iglesia at pakiramdam ninyo ang inyong mga contribution ay hindi special, at ang inyong kalaob ay mahina kumpara sa iba, ang mensaheng, mensaheng ito ay para sa inyo. God has placed you where you are on purpose and for a purpose. The Old and the New Testament are littered with examples of men and women who were saved to serve in the kingdom of God in spite of their imperfections. How many chinks were in the armor of the men that God appointed to be prophets and priests and kings? How faulty, how flawed, how failing were the people chosen by God and yet what victories they won for Him. And the application of this is that in the body of Christ, in the church that God has established, God can likewise use a people like us. Just look at verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. I hope you realize that this is not some kind of uh, self-esteem seminar. This is not, oh, you're amazing just the way you are. Now I'm preaching to you what God's Word says here. Every part of the body is indispensable. God is the gracious distributor of all kinds of gifts within His church. And though some may be busy in ministry and they feel unseen, and they feel unappreciated, and they feel unnoticed and unapplauded, God knows what you do. And eternity will make it plain. The contributions that have been made by those who never rung a bell. 
Never stood up in the limelight, never preached a sermon, but simply served from the heart. J.R. Tolkien's first book in the trilogy, Lord of the Rings, is called Fellowship of the Ring. And in that book, he describes a, a group of individuals of peculiar origin that are all brought together in their diversity. You know the story, I'm sure. There are hobbits, there's a wizard, there's a dwarf, there's an elf, there's a warrior. All totally different, different shapes and sizes, and yet they're all committed to a common cause. All of them are bound together by a great mission to take the ring to Mordor. Dito sa Corinto, sa at sa ating texto, we find a fellowship that exceeds all true or fictional fellowship. Ito ang iglesia, ang katawan ni Cristo. They are diverse, they're unique, they are a mixed group of people. Forget Middle Earth, just think about Corinth. Or if it helps you and it feels more relevant to your situation, look around the room. Grace Baptist Church Los Banos and other churches in the fellowship with us. This, this afternoon, praise God for a diverse but united congregation. Praise God that just as the body is so perfectly wired together, the DNA is too complex for my mind to understand. The design is so intricate and yet the whole body just works together seamlessly together. And the same is true within the church. Kahit ang pinakamahihina na kasapi ay bahagi ng katawan na pinagsama-sama ng Diyos upang ipakita ang kapangyarihan at kagandahan ng Ebanghelyo. That is why He has done it. To show the beauty and the power of the gospel, making one body of many members. Well, just in closing, as we picture the church as one body, we are not only told of its unity and its diversity, but lastly, we are offered a statement of solidarity. A statement of solidarity. Look with me at verses 25 to 27. There may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. I remember a funny conversation, speaking of anniversaries, of a couple who was celebrating 40 years of marriage. And the question was asked, so what is the secret to a happy marriage? And the wife replied, well, my husband and I have managed to be happy together for so many years, most likely because we're both in love with the same man. Now, that's not the message of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. That would be a one-sided relationship. No, the church is to be united through mutual love and mutual care. It is not by everyone just looking out for number one. It's not about self-care. It's about mutual care, which encompasses the whole body. Nobody is left out. Nobody is unloved. That is the end to which we as churches must strive. Now, I believe that the church here in Los Banos has been doing that so well for 43 years. I'm sure it's not been all plain sailing. I'm sure there have been highs and there have been lows, but the reality is that you are here today, a living testimony of the goodness and the grace of our great God in heaven. And the, and the answer for any potential divisions that may develop is to look in at our text, keep on keeping on, care for one another, rejoice with one another, Drive alongside each other in suffering. Be a faithful member of the covenant body. Because it is here that you have committed your life. Not only by way of a theological confession. 
like us in Santa Maria, here you are, I, uh, I assume subscribing to the Second London Baptist Confession of Faith, the 1689, what a wonderful confession that is, but also more personally, not just your theology, but your family covenants. You have committed as a member that you will care for the body that in God's providence He has placed you to be a part of. Hindi tayo iniligtas ni Kristo upang magtipon lamang sa parehong gusali isang beses sa isang linggo kumanta na magkasama, makinig ng sermon at pagkatapos ay umalis at mamuhay ng ganap na hiwalay, walang connection sa isa't isa. Kaya nga sa aming iglesia, as we were thinking of constituting earlier this year, I uh, tried to make a very important distinction between covenant membership and the low commitment suki card style membership that is prevalent in so many churches today. Uh, yes, I've been to Mercury Drug, I've seen the suki cards, it's something that you sign up for, isn't it? So that you can get points that will lead to discounts that will lead to your own personal benefit, but to belong to the body of Christ. And to be united into membership of a church. A church that takes the word of God seriously. That loves to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. We are recognizing as we come into such a body. This is no longer me and my personal faith with Jesus. No, we are to care for others. With a self-denying, self-sacrificial Selfless love. It's not my faith. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. We're to resist the devil. We're to run away from the evil one. Because Satan, as you know, he wants nothing more than for the church of Christ to be disunited and divided. He, he wants chaos. He wants conflict. He wants to distract the church away from the task of advancing the gospel. He wants to sow bitterness amongst the body. He is the enemy of the church and we must be constantly on our guards. Kapag ang frustration ay lumalaki patungkol sa isang kapatid kay Kristo, kailangan mong ayusin ang isyong iyon ng maaga. Dapat mong agad na alisin ang problema bago ito lumago at magdulot ng lason sa buong iglesia. Sinabi ng Puritano na si Richard Baxter, If you cannot pluck up a tender plant, are you likely to pull up an oak tree? Magpasa kayong tugunan ang problema ng division gamit ang solution na ibinibigay ni Pablo sa mga talatang ito. Having the same care for one another. If one member suffers, we all suffer together. If one member is honored, we all rejoice together. And do not only aim for such unity and solidarity in the midst of our diversity because the Apostle Paul told you it. No, from the lesser to the greater, though all of Scripture is inspired Look at the high priestly prayer of John chapter 17, which emphasizes the importance of solidarity. That is the desire of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. We get to eavesdrop in on the conversation, the intercession that he had between his Father and on behalf of his people. John chapter 17 verse 20. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me. In that passage, Jesus is approaching the end of his earthly life. He's about to be brutally murdered on a Roman cross. And what concerns him during his time of prayer is that his followers... All members of future churches might be perfected in unity as is perfectly demonstrated in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
At mga kapatid, yan ang takilang hangarin ni Kristo para sa Grace Baptist Church of Los Panos. Tulad ng hangarin ni Pablo para sa iglesia sa Corinto. And so let me just finish because the time is up. You know, don't you, how the whole body gets involved when you stub your toe. Have you stubbed your toe before? Uh, it's very painful. The nerve carries the message to the brain and the brain sends a message to the feet which then begin to respond and the eyes might fill with tears and the mouth might scream in pain. And when we see that scenario, we're given a picture of how the church must respond to the suffering that may take place within its membership. United, diverse, and standing in solidarity. Your grief is my grief. Your joy is my joy. In sorrow or sickness, in tragedy or triumph, in sickness and in health, the church stands together as one body. A united community of believers, diverse in so many ways, yet solidarity is taking place. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it never be divided. Now ay tulungan tayo ng Diyos sa kanyang biyaya at para sa kanyang kalulwalhatian. Amen. Let's pray. Our loving and living God, we bow before your throne of grace, thanking you that though we are prone to wander, oh, we feel it's prone to leave the God we love. We pray that you would take our hearts and take and seal it, seal it for your courts above. Give us unity in the midst of our diversity and help us to stand solidly together that when the storms rage and the devil does his worst, when the world and the flesh begin to conspire against the church, we pray that we would strive together as one body. And Lord God, that in all of this, you would get the glory. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.